that Piper Lapine is back at the final stages here after being the champion of Baltimore earlier this year. What a phenomenal performance as she's made her way from the senior division into the Masters and really shined. And such an insane accomplishment. You never know once you get into the Masters division whereabouts people are going to be falling. Obviously a strong player over in seniors and that is not stopped if anything. I mean, Piper's only gotten better and better. Yeah, she's doing phenomenal work and has an opportunity here to become a two-time regional champion just this year alone. That is going to be with, of course, the opportunity of this Mewtwo V Union and the Snorlax. Gorman Dye is continuing to build the hand up. And maybe if you get lucky, you get that Mewtwo out a little earlier than you thought. She still has one more person to take down, though, to try and become that two-time regional champion. And it's going to be Christian Lapella. And accomplishments as well over on this side. Top 32 at Worlds, which if you've seen some of the players competing there at Worlds, like that is definitely an accomplishment. Yeah, I believe that the, the winning in trying to get in there and uh, unfortunately wasn't able to get that done, but it was with the trusty Duralid on deck, top 32, and some fantastic results as a senior as well. So two young guns trying to get the job done here with the Duralid on VMAX now. Uh, it's gonna be a little bit of an uphill climb potentially. We do know that there are um, some certain plays back and forth between both these players. Gonna keep an eye on those fighting energies to see if Duraldon can keep on attacking. So then with a couple of the matches that we've had here in the top eight being pretty one-sided, I mean, you just either you have the matchup or you don't. Where is it on this Duraldon that we're really looking at to try and have more of a chance going up against this Mewtwo V Union. I, once again, it always comes down to, can you put the control deck on the clock? If we see the speed of the Arceus Duraldon build, if you can get that early Arceus V start attacking and eventually charge up the Duraldon to do its purpose, to take big knockouts and to stick around for a long time, then uh, you have to think that Christian would be able to, to pull this one out. It's gonna be exciting to see if Piper has the answers. We know that uh, these control decks, they continue to stick around. They just keep promoting more Snorlax, more Miltank, trying to get the job done. And it's definitely gonna lead to a very exciting finals here. It will be such a great time. And the one thing that I always look at with this Mewtwo V Union is how the prizes are gonna go. Of course, Tonya is it a chance to get cards out, but other than some energies, there's not gonna be any Mewtwo pieces in there. So it's okay, but an Arceus V and V star over on Christian's end. Yeah, not too bad for Christian. Looks like he has that boss's orders that maybe he could work into the mix later on. The mill tank is a little bit awkward as that can be a great resource to buy some time in the early game against the Arceus. Uh, and uh, we're gonna see that at the top of the prize card. So it might be a little while until that is found with a Peonia. And it'll be the question of can Christian just get that set up and start putting this onto a clock? These first couple of turns could be really, really crucial here. And it'll be the Duraludon starting on Christian's end. Yep, not the ideal Pokemon to start with, of course. If you could get that Arceus V going, that's going to be ideal. But you're going to have the Ultra Ball, so not too bad. And plenty of supporter cards to go along with this. So looks like a solid hand overall. And uh, th something also important to note in uh, this matchup when you're playing against control hand disruption can be so important and it looks like christian is featuring three copies of that marnie with one in hand already yeah when you're trying to put this control decks on a clock any way that you can disrupt them is going to be beneficial to you we've seen these mewtwo v union decks unable to get those pieces in time and they might be able to get it set up in the end but so much damage has been done so marnie could be fantastic Plenty of time here in the finals, 75 minutes. So take all the time you need. Make sure that all of the energies are accounted for. You can see the three fighting energies are there. So certainly some play there for the Duraludon VMAX. And there are some ways to recover that potentially if they are uh, discarded by way of Crushing Hammer. Yeah, it does have, this list does have that one off of training court. So being able to grab that from the discard. There is the Raihan, but in this matchup, I mean, Piper's not really looking to take prizes at all. So you only have really your one out with the stadium. Looks like Christian is thinking about that Arceus V and it is important to get that Pokemon down. If you can make uh, some good use of that, using a Trinity charge at some point, or even just having uh, the Arceus V star so that you can use Starbirth to assist your Duraludon in setting up would be great.
Yeah, this Arceus V-Star, it's beefy. Trinity Nova doing a good chunk of damage in the Starburst ability. I mean, that's so strong. With having it on the bench, just a pass over to Piper at this point. Ultra Ball, one of the pieces is going to be thrown in the discard here and has to start getting the bench Pokemon out because the Evelto is not necessarily the starter you want in this. Yeah, it's not ideal, but it's it's not the worst either. Cry of Destruction can certainly help out if the Arceus gets off to an early start and uses those double turbo energies, but ideally you would be using that Snorlax and Gormandizing in spots like this. When you see an Ultra Ball throwing away a Mewtwo piece and a Quick Ball, you know the hand is gas, and sure enough, go ahead and take the counter to two. Mewtwo pieces into the discard pile. Make it three <laughs> on turn one. What a way to start things off here for Piper. All right, just one more Mewtwo piece until we get to see that big Mewtwo out on the field here. That's definitely a great way to be starting it off. And I mean, at Christian here, that's a that's a little worrisome. <laughs> this is not a situation I would imagine Piper finds herself in too often. She might get all of the pieces of the Mewtwo into the discard pile and then wait to find the energies to accelerate. <laughs> it might not be time to, to bring out the Mewtwo at this point. And wow, look at this. The scoop up nets the last card. Gorman dies for seven. You can't draw it up any better than that. You definitely cannot. You want to see as many cards as you can going on forward into that. And now Christian, you have to make sure that you can try and keep pace with any anything that Piper's throwing at you. So the evolution incense that go for this to grab an Arceus V-Star and be able to evolve. Yeah, one big uh, piece that was missing from Christian's opener was there was no energy attachment. If that happened on the Arceus V, then there certainly is an opportunity where you find a switching effect. You get the double turbo energy and you charge up all of these energies onto the Duraludon V and it, that's just not going to be the case now. It, it might be an interesting situation where you play down this Arceus and try to find a, a route where you get another Arceus V down, throw a double turbo on and try to Trinity charge. Uh, it's, it's hard to find out where these energies are going to come from at this point, and Marnie's going to have to try to help out here. Yeah, considering Piper did have seven cards in her hand, Christian gets to see five new ones, and Piper has to shuffle back and only take four. I believe that's the last Mewtwo piece now that she has in hand. Yeah, one of the big benefits of using the Marnie is and you get to limit the hand size uh, after the Gorman dies, but you want to also do that in combination with a knockout. If you can remove the Snorlax from play and then there is no follow-up Gorman dies, you can really put the control deck in a bad spot. It's Starbirth now, the super powerful V-Star power from this Arceus V-Star. You can grab any two cards from your deck. That type of search power is insane. Yeah, this is a great way to start things off. We'll see if there's potential to accelerate some cards. We do see the switch is going to be pulled up, and there is a double turbo energy. But I think this is just going to be waiting for the next turn. Doesn't want to go after the Arceus V and play down too many other Pokemon. Here's a crushing hammer to start things off for this Ooh. turn and going to take away the metal. When you're already a one turn behind with the energy attachment because you whiffed it the first time around, that crushing hammer feels so much more impactful as that metal energy just goes into the discard. And now Christian will have to try and power that up again. It'll be the quick ball just getting rid of the Silene. You gotta go back and figure out what Pokemon you need to be putting down on Piper's end. It's uh, in this matchup. I guess there's two ways to go about using those crushing hammers. You can you can focus all of those on just the fighting energies and try to get the job done that way. Remove all of those from play and not have to worry about the attack of the Duraludon V Max. But there's also a route where you just remove all the energies so that the Arceus V Star can't attack. If you can limit uh, the, the power of this deck and slow it down a couple of turns, uh, it's also beneficial just in general to have crushing hammers in a spot where you know they are. If they're in the discard pile, you can always pull them out too. Yeah, if you can't get enough energies onto that Arceus V-Star to then have the further energy acceleration with that Trinity Nova, well then, what is this deck really going to be doing? Coralus experiment now on Christian's end. Be able to C5, put three of them into hand, two into the Lost Zone. Looks like we will see one of those fighting energies featured in the Coralus' experiment. Of course, we do not care about the cards going to the Lost Zone. There's no real recovery uh, for any of these cards. Once they're gone, they are gone. A nice way to at least be able to thin your deck out a little bit and make sure that you can get three cards off of it that could be useful for you to try and further up with this setup. Well, if Christian were to play down an energy this turn, you would think it, he'd love to have that be a metal energy. You play that down on the Arceus V-Star. You're not 
putting a, a fighting energy down on a Pokemon that isn't a Duraludon, and you also just don't want to play down a double turbo if it's not going to uh, be used that turn as maybe you get targeted by a Flannery. Yeah, and considering that you have a lot less of the double turbo energies and fighting energies than you do the metal energies, you do have to be conscious of the count going into this. But it will be an energy bench onto the Arceus V that's freshly put down with this double turbo energy and a parasol. Yeah, this is fantastic. This is what I was looking for last turn, but it's going to go ahead and say, yeah, after that crushing hammer, I can't afford to waste any more time. Uh, the double turbo doing a great job here setting up the Geraldon V. Yeah, the Arceus V-Star, you need the three energy, but you only need two for the Trinity charge. Sure, you're not dealing any damage, but being able to make sure that, hey, I'm not going to be on the wrong end of all these crushing hammers is definitely nice. Well, Piper might be smelling blood in the water. We saw the switch used, and that's a beneficial card. And wow, crushing hammer is going to remove that fighting energy. A great understanding of the matchup here, and even the twin energy for the Evital. Could we see the energy removed off of the Arceus V at some point? Silene, both tail flips. So no use to that card whatsoever. That's just going to go straight into the discard as Galar Mind is going to make its way out onto the field. Higher retreat cost for the active Pokemon. Well, I don't think Snorlax wants to go anywhere, but yes, <laughs> very beneficial to slow down the Arceus V and maybe avoid uh, Duraldon coming out a little earlier than anticipated. Especially since... Christian does have that Duraludon VMAX in hand and does use it to evolve up on the bench. And now it's going to be Marnie time. Yeah, and uh, there is an opportunity to take a knockout. If we can see the Arceus V-Star drawn off of this Marnie here, there's a lot of uh, effects <laughs> against this Arceus V right now, the quadruple turbo, as we've coined it before, but there is the Ultra Ball. Yeah, you... You don't have too many cards in your hand. You've got to be careful which you're getting rid of. Christian thinking it out, but ultimately it will be a VMAX Draladon as well as a Metal Energy that's going to go into that discard to make sure that an Arceus V Star can be grabbed. Oh no, I think we actually, we had the one in the prize cards and it's just a 4-2 count, so not going to have oh, an opportunity be. there. Are we just going to see a Power Edge? The Power Edge, I mean, you're doing some damage, but uh, considering it's not much else, if you, you're you only dealing 130, that's not going to be enough in this case. Yeah, you're only going to be dealing 90. It's, <laughs> it's going to be even worse. <laughs> yeah, it's not worth it. Just oh. see some energies go down onto the Duraludon VMAX double fighting. That is all of the fighting energies, so if these are removed, and uh, then it's just the training court that we're talking about as uh, one way to bring them back. Yeah, opting instead of the Trinity Charge, and that Duraludon VMAX on the bench is definitely has its fair share of energy to make sure that, okay, we're all set, we're all kosher going into this. Now on Piper's end, another benched Snorlax. Of course, just adding to the, the consistency, being able to always rely on that Snorlax to help assist if ever a Marnie comes down. We've seen two already, there's one more to dodge, and after that, Piper can start building up that hand. Yeah, as soon as all the Marnies are out of play, you are good to go in your hand. Won't be able to get touched. Pikamuku, though, love the ability. Pitch a Pikamuku, and you'll be able to put that in the bottom and grab. And a crushing hammer heads. That is another fighting energy gone. We talked about the lack of recovery options on Christian's end. Only the one. That's unreal. What a way to start things off. Piper removing another of those fighting energies. And you can just feel the tension here for Christian now. Prize cards need to be taken very soon, and it doesn't look like it's going to be from an Arceus at any point. Maybe you have to get aggressive with this Duraludon, but that's the, the last fighting energy. Yeah, that's a tough position to be in. Crystal Cave, though, will be a stadium out to go ahead and bump that Galar Mine. Make sure that this retreat cost does go back to normal so you can be bringing back this Arceus onto the bench and put out the Duraludon instead. All right, Christian going to say, I've seen plenty of crushing hammers. You did not flip very well with the Silene, and maybe oh. I can buy some time, but there it goes <laughs> right away. The Galar mine and the boss's orders. Brutal for this Arceus. Yeah, Christian, uh, that was it was a nice attempt to get that into the act of, but Piper says no chance whatsoever with it fastest response with that boss's orders. Now an opportunity with the Palpad to start throwing a couple of supporters back in, including that Silene. 
Yeah, Piper not skipping a beat at all. We see the Silene addition. That means that there will be an opportunity to bring back some of these crushing hammers. You only need one good flip to really put Christian in a bad spot, reliant completely on a training court to be able to attack with that Duraludon. At least one thing that's nice is so far, both of the Galar Mines have been used, so then you can maybe force the decision where you either, Piper's unlucky with the Silene flips or you have to force the decision between the stadiums and getting the crushing hammers. We see the escape rope, and that's going to be a promotion of the Evital. Not too concerned about removing that double turbo. Instead, just wants to make sure that the Snorlaxes continue to draw even closer to finding more of those crushing hammer. And just how much impact and those crushing hammers will be able to make. Ultra Ball now for a turn. A Snorlax instantly brought right back. I mean... I know there's a lot more to this deck than just the Snorlax, but considering I'm just watching three Snorlax chill out on the <laughs> on the playing area in the finals, it's a it's a pretty cool sight. Yeah, she's maxing and relaxing all cool. We've seen two <laughs> switching effects already used also, so I want to make note that maybe the uh, a Yellhorn that's in this list could be really strong. <laughs> hey, there you go. Sometimes it works out like that. Going to see the confusion come down on that Duraludon VMAX, and that, that gets awkward. Yeah, very simple effect. Both active Pokemon are now confused. You do not care whatsoever for the Snorlax. So basically, your active Pokemon is confused. And already, I mean, Christian's had the slow start, and all the energy that's built up on the Stralodon could not even matter if you find yourself on the wrong end of a flip. <laughs> flip we shall. And what do we have here off the table? Christian's going to try one more time, and that is a Tails. Unfortunate. Going to damage yourself in that regard and pass over the turn. Peonia now on Piper's end. Make sure that you can grab three prize cards, look at them, and potentially swap out. Great way to make sure you have every resource that you need available. Yeah, this is such a great card in these control variants. You have plenty of time, and you just want to make sure that you can see all 60 cards. And if you have all the resources available to yourself, well, then clearly you're going to be in a spot where you can continue to draw towards the right answers. It will be this group up. And oh, just wow, it found the crushing hammer off the one card. Hey, sometimes it's like that, all right? <laughs> sometimes you get that top deck, but we'll have to at least wait a turn for that one as Christian now has to figure out what he needs to do, and the like, answer could just be flip heads. I, I like that. Yeah, I think that's going to be a strong strategy. Galarmine's still down, no retreating, no nothing, and that is another Tails. That is a tough blow. You finally get all the oh. energy on, and Piper's the only no. one that's flipping heads at this point. All of these rolls on the crushing hammer are right, and that's three fighting energy now in Christian's discard. Oh, just demoralizing. Give me your hand. I'm going to take some stuff away, too. <laughs> it's just one after another. So many things going right for Piper at this end, and now no fighting energy to make use of the Duraludon. That's you have to hope for the training court. It is it is just training court, and even then you need to flip heads, and you need to do that four times. And in that time, you also can't see a single crushing hammer heads on that last fighting energy. Absolutely brutal here. And even now you can see there's not, much, not many cards left in deck either for Christian. There's so many things playing against him right now. Yeah, go ahead and, go ahead and use that Marnie and just... Yet again, we'll see if I can get something good off the top here and if I can make sure that Piper is not going to be able to do as much as she had, but nah, it's going to be off of those card draws. Christian's like, nope, we're going to end this. We're going to go into a game two. Yeah, absolutely. Perfection there from Piper. The flips went very well. And uh, also, it's sometimes you just... Uh, it, it works out that way. We saw some uh, fantastic setups there with the Snorlax continuing to draw into the right cards. Christian had an opportunity to attack in, but uh, just lost there because of that Arceus in the prize cards. So maybe an opportunity in game number two to get a little more aggressive. Minus all of the shenanigans here at the Crushing Hammers, I also wonder how differently that would have turned out if Christian was able to get that first turn energy attachment. Because already just kind of a turn behind from that. And when you're going for the Trinity Charge as opposed to the Trinity Nova, you're so far behind even just from that. No, that's a, that's a great point. It's it's so tough when you when the cards don't fall the right way for Arceus. It's also a reason why we've seen players start to, to fade away from that deck as uh, it uh, it is pretty reliant on finding the right cards in the opening hand. And, uh, other players with Lugia instead, they 
They can wait and maybe get those energies later on and get some, some benefits there. And so instead, Christian just needs to get the double turbos and get rolling. And in that first match, we're not even talking about Mewtwo v Union. I mean, the pieces thrown away into the discard, but the crushing hammers and just that constant pressure applied onto Christian to make sure that no matter what he tried to do, that he wasn't allowed to even really get into the game, made all of that impact. Just those loops to get the Silene to keep grabbing those cards was just unbeatable. Yeah, I mean, Mewtwo can certainly see a, a role in this matchup. If you, uh, as Christian, just load up so many energies on one single Pokemon, it almost becomes not worth it uh, to go ahead and go with a cr uh, crushing hammer strategy. Instead, uh, you get that Mewtwo out, and if you aren't being knocked out by the attacks, if it's just a, a big Arceus continually hitting for 200, you just heal that right off, and it's a stalemate. Yeah, but didn't even have to use it the first game. We'll see if it does make an appearance here in the second one as these players are getting ready to go. And it just goes back to, all right, does Christian just need to get a little bit luckier in the second game? I, I, I think the prize cards uh, are looking a little better here for Christian this time around. We do see one Mewtwo piece in the prize cards here for Piper, but I surely expect to see a little better start here from Christian, although it's Duraludon once again. That's <laughs> We play four Arceus for a reason. No, we call this the Duraludon deck. This is what you're going to get to start with. Uh, tough luck does have cards in hand, though, to be able to go and try and fish something else out of the second, get an Arceus onto the bench, considering we're just going to use that Quick Ball to start. Yeah, in, in a matchup where every switching effect, every energy is so important, it feels unfortunate that you're going to have to use those to get set up. But that's why you play multiple copies and uh, Arceus can certainly see some great use here on the opening turn getting down. Take a little bit of time, make sure that you have the pieces together, figure out where your fighting energy are, figure out what you have going on for it. Nothing too scary prize on Christian's end. Plenty of energies as well to go along with this. So multiple double turbos again. A little concerned about the uh, supporter. <laughs> and maybe uh, could have been one in there, but I only got a quick glimpse. Yeah, there's one Chorus's experiment that was in the prizes and two Poke Gears, so it might be a little more difficult to be drawing into. We'll have to see how that makes an impact going into this. It will be an Arceus V put down onto the bench, and it will be an energy attached this time with a double turbo energy. It looks like there was an evolution incense in the hand there, so Arceus V Star should be able to bail out Christian in this spot and give us a pretty great game, except there's a crushing hammer. Big tails. That is humongous here to make sure that this energy can just survive the turn. You just need it to make it into this next turn so you'll be able to get this Arceus V-Star evolved and actually deal some damage while attaching more energy on the field. There's a lot of scary turns in the Pokemon <laughs> TCG, but does it get scarier than that when you were completely reliant on this energy sticking around in order for your strategy to work and <laughs> just one flip and it all goes away? It's so terrifying. At least after you've used the Trinity Nova, there's a lot of things on the field. But Marnie now, this is a new chance for Piper to not only put Christian down to less cards, but to find another crushing hammer. But doesn't quite look like it's there. Does find a nice piece in that psychic energy to get to the discard pile. If we ever do see that Mewtwo, it's going to want to take that. And just find more Pokemon at this stage. Just uh, play cards out of your hands, make Gormandize used to maximum efficiency, and try to keep up with the prize race as it looks like Christian could certainly have a decent second turn. If we can still keep that energy going on into the second turn, because it will be an Evaltal bench with a twin energy, but instead just going to end it off with a Gormanize. Christian finding a quick ball to start things off now. Not too many Pokemon that you're exactly looking for at this stage of the game, but it might be important just to thin out a little bit. Thin out, try and get something else set up, but the Arceus V-Star and getting this online and getting your energies is going to be the number one priority at this point. A good thin, though, just before this Pokegear, a chance to look at the top seven and grab a supporter there and see if you can maybe get to see a couple more cards this time around. Oh Last one, no. boss's order. Desperately was looking for some help there. I think there's just two Arceus V in the hand right now, or 
maybe a, there's a Raihan as well. There's, there's nothing really happening right now. Desperately wanted to find Colrus's experiment or anything to just start drawing cards, and that's a pass. You've got some energy, but you don't really have too much else going for you at this point. And now Silene, the first is a heads, second. That'd be two things now. Okay, we'll re-roll that, but it'll still be a heads. That's, that's all fine. Grab two from the discard and put back on top of the deck. You want to see me do it again? <laughs> <laughs> sure enough, there it is. Crushing hammer. And this is a great spot to be. Pitch Pukimuku, get to that crushing hammer. And can you remove the energy? Wow. In, it's just flipping heads after heads after heads. At least Christian was able to put a second energy onto that he is, but it's not even going to matter at this point. With the scoop up net, the Veltal does make its way into the active slot. That cry of destruction, discarding the special energy off of that Arceus V, and that is devastating for Christian. Nightmare scenario, passing the turn after top decking the training court, a card that was missed dearly in the last game. And Piper is going to continue to push on here. We see the Galarmine and the Gorman dies. And uh, the resources are just going to continue to pile. Looks like we do see a nice top deck, however, for Christian. Yeah, and the, I mean, you need so much going your way at this point, too. The thing going up against Piper is you're not really being allowed to play the game. You've already lost some energy. None of your Pokemon have anything on it. You want to get this Arceus V up and going so you can try and apply some pressure back. <laughs> this is This is... So awkward, you see the, the Ultra Ball that could go and grab the Arceus V-Star. You could use Star Birth and maybe find Switch Double Turbo, and then you can start to uh, accelerate some energies with an, an Arceus V that's in the hand. But you still need to draw cards. You need a supporter right now, and um, can I maybe have to get lucky off of that supporter now? Yeah, with the Star Birth V-Star power, it is so strong and so powerful. You can grab two whole cards, but sometimes you kind of just need that third. And uh, when your resources are kind of on your own side, it's definitely going to be important to see where you try and prioritize. Just doing a deck check to figure out where this pri priority should be as that Arceus V-Star does make its way out onto the field. Yeah, at this stage is when you'd love to have a card like Professor's Research that you could lean on, but it's going to be Marnie. And yes, it is nice to disrupt the Snorlax, but it's really helpful when you're taking a prize card along with it, and that's absolutely not the case here. The other card drawn, it's going to be that Metal Energy, and now being able to Marnie up. The Piper has had everything that she's really needed so far, so hopefully this Marnie can stop her in her tracks. Asking a lot, would love to hold on to this metal energy for a long time as it's the only real way to accelerate more energies. And at least we see the Duraludon VMAX coming down, but what else can you do with this hand? Not much, it's gonna be an ev evolving and then it's going to be a pass. Sydney now, your opponent reveals their hand, discard two any combination of Pokemon tool cards, special energy cards in Stadium. I mean, the hand wasn't too great, so not too much there. Just a Gorbanize and a Crushing Hammer now in hand for Piper for next turn. Well, I don't know if we're going to see that much longer. There was a Marnie in the hand for Christian, and once again, the clock starts to start taking more prize cards. Ultra Ball going to help thin down a little bit, grab that Arceus so that I can go down to the bottom of the deck off after the Marnie. And uh, obviously, Christian would love to see a switch in combination with a double turbo energy. It's a lot to ask for from five cards. We'll have to see, though. There's been a lot of luck from Piper's end, but we do have a Poke Gear first. So a chance with something. It will be the boss's orders yet again grabbed. Something else that can just be thrown right into the bottom of the deck. Yeah, yeah, multiple bosses' orders are going to go to the bottom of the deck, and I guess that's a, a fair place for them, I suppose. And now Marnie going to have to try one more time to help out. They're asking so much. But it's just two cards. We just need that double turbo energy. We just need that switch. That's not the energy that we, you know, necessarily wanted. If it's combined with a switch, though, we could still have an option with the Trinity charge, but nope, pass over to Piper. Finally, a Tails on the Crushing Hammer, though, so at least those two energy will stick. I guess it, if, if you're not going to get the right cards, at least find more energy, and hopefully you can stick around for a little longer. Still no pieces of Mewtwo in the discard pile, and Christian's just going to 
get as much information as he can. We saw two psychic energies in there, so that'll be beneficial later on. But I don't even know if the strategy wants to go that way at this point. Just keep going through the deck and finding these hammers. As well, Miss Fortune Sisters looking at the top five cards of your opponent's Got deck. That's switch. the switch that was there. You can discard any number of item cards. You Evan, that switch, that one of switch for Christian being thrown into the discard is a heavy blow. There's just the one escape rope from this point forward now that could help out Duraludon with the three uh, retreat cost, make it a little more with the Galar Mind. And uh, you're going to have to see these energy attachments uh, come down onto the active if we can't see that rope soon. Chorus's experiment doesn't look like any rope there. And you just want to make sure, too, that you can grab that rope. That's not going to find its way on to a misfortune, sister. Sure, it's a one of, but I mean, the option to get things back into the deck. Viper's been doing a great job at dwindling Christian's resources. Yep, there we do see the fighting energy is in the hand now. So maybe if Duraludon wants to get going, we could see the metal attachment and try to work a little bit closer towards getting an attack off at GMAX pulverization. but. You got, you're going to need some help from your deck at some point. Which way do you want to go? Are you leaning towards that last rope, or do you just play down the energy? Looks like Energy Parasol is going to be the move. And then the Crushing Hammer is the response. Tails again, though. So we got in the two tails in a row, so the things that could be a little worse. Going to take the opportunity, though, to get rid of that big Parasol, of course, making sure that Roman can, in fact, be affected by effects here. Silene going to be put back into the deck with Palpad in combination with the Sydney. And another Palpad to go along with it. Just uh, getting these cards out of the hand and along with getting some additional resources uh, back into the deck. Always a strong call and it looks like there should be uh, some additional turns here for Snorlax to continue to Gormandize. The Snorlax definitely putting in the work. I wish I could accomplish this month much while I was just chilling and asleep. There it is, though. It will be a the professor's research to refresh the hand here for Piper. Yeah, what a what a great way to continue to to go through this turn now. Finding a quick ball too. I'm just gonna keep looking for for more cards. Uh, the crushing hammers would be fantastic, but honestly, at this point, as long as you find a Silene and you can continue to chain that together and keep giving yourself opportunities, you're gonna feel pretty comfortable. Yep, Peach. Pitch a Pikamuku and the crushing hammer. It is going to be ahead this time around. So goodbye to one of the only three fighting energy that Christian does feature in his list. And the Duraludon VMAX in the active has nothing attached to it now. Just see a scoop up net to thin a card out of the hand. Uh, Piper definitely streamlining here to get all of the right cards lined up to keep Christian out of this game completely. Doing a great job of that get to see an energy off of the Kohler's experiment, but still no rope to be seen. A couple of bosses orders maybe to buy some time, but we see that the Evatol is holding onto a couple energies there. Maybe mill tank means that Gormandai's wouldn't be happening, but if you're playing these scoop up nets as uh, as Piper is right now, maybe maybe there's a little bit extra going on in that hand too. We've seen this one before. It's going to be the quick ball. Grab the Pukumuku. We all know what happens next. Managing to just make sure you can always grab a card. You can just keep going through your deck as much as possible while Christian's stuck there not doing much. He's, he's such a helpful little buddy. He says, I know you didn't want me, but I'll, I'll try to help you get to your goal. I didn't think about it. like that, That's sad. We're going <laughs> to we're gonna think about it in positive ways here. Peonian now supporter for turn for Piper. Looking at three of the prize cards and be able to swap them out with cards from hand, just to make sure everything that she needs is at her disposal. It's always great to see the opportunity to look in the prize cards. We do see that one Mewtwo V piece sitting at the tippy top, but of course a second Peonia could reveal that to Piper. She knows exactly where it is, and uh, we'll eventually find that if it becomes Mewtwo time. Though I feel like the Snorlaxes in combination with these crushing hammers, are putting in enough work that uh, Piper looks to be in a fine spot without that Mewtwo. Yeah, maybe this will be like the uh, the Kyogre. We're just we, we can always talk about it, but it's it, it's never really correct. But it would be cool to find, to see again. We're just simple people. We want to see the cool cards come out to play. But uh, there is something fun that 
even though this is just control and controls can be sometimes the hardest to watch, it is interesting to see the intricacies of the deck and just how it's played out to make sure that you can stay ahead while not taking prizes. Similarly for Christian, he's playing like a theme deck, just throwing down energies, but it's he's doing everything correct at this stage. Just give yourself an opportunity to find a fighting energy and start attacking. Maybe you get lucky and Piper isn't able to flip heads on the next couple crushing hammers and that can start getting you prize cards. At this point, the Ultra Ball, gonna go ahead and grab that left leg here for that Mewtwo and a follow up Ultra Ball to Get rid of it right after you grab it as well for a way of boss's order. Just grab another piece of that Mewtwo V Union out. Maybe could put on a show for us. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> it's always, Maybe. always nice to see at least one piece into the discard pile. It's uh, pretty unbelievable that this is just the, the first piece that we're seeing here now as well, upwards of 20 cards are in the discard pile right now. Yeah, instead the other pieces that have been so useful here, including the Silean Tails on the first one though, heads on the second, you'll be able to grab that one card that you're gonna prioritize most out of your discard here. And that looks to be the pal pad in this situation. Make sure you can keep refreshing, keep throwing the Silean back into your deck. Absolutely, and Gormandai's just going to throw that right back into the hand now. Of course, you'd love to see the crushing hammers, but if you don't have the supporters to go along with it and keep the chain rolling, it's gonna be absolutely useless. Yeah, I mean, you play a lot of these crushing hammers. You have the four of them, but it's it's kind of nice when you have the supporters readily available that you can keep throwing them back. So you have to make sure other things will allow you to get those supporters like that pal pad. At this point, though, boss's order, bring up this mill tank, but a yell horn in response that puts the Drowladon to be confused. And even finds a Silene off the top after pitching the Pukamuku. And it's uh, a little unfortunate with the flips. Maybe just saving those for the crushing hammers. There it is. Even though there's the boss's orders from Christian, a scoop up net will bring that mill tank right out of that active slot, put right back onto the bench so this Snorlax and the Gorbanize ability can go back into the active. Well, once again, Christian in this uh, spot where even if you do have the fighting energy, you're confused. You're going to have to flip your way out of this and you can't find anything. Another pass of the turn. It's a rough go of it. You need this fighting energy to be able to do anything, but you just can't grab it. That's the thing with not running too many of them. And now, Active Piper, it'll be Team Yells Cheer. Any combination of Pokemon supporter cards, except for Team Yells Cheer, from your discard pile in to your deck. So basically, just a supporter pal pad plus more. Super pal pad. Yeah, I'm going to get couple Silenes in there and also the Peonia that would be able to find that last Mewtwo piece if it ever becomes a relevant choice. And uh, just the pass of the turn. Looks like there was uh, a way to continue to thin the hand out and Piper's just content. Like, no, I'm, I'm good with where I'm at for now. I'm going to throw it back to you. I'm going to make you show me this fighting energy and that you're doing anything to play the game. The escape rope that we've been waiting for for so long <laughs> over on Christian's end finally is going to be drawn and a chance to bring this Arceus Vsar up into the active slot. It will be an energy from hand and we'll be able to get underway now with this Trinity Nova. Yeah, this is finally going to be a knockout. I was wondering if Miltank was going to be promoted in the active spot and avoid the prize card there, but we will see. Uh, these fighting energies finally making their way onto the Duraludon, and Piper knows exactly what to do in this spot. You can see the win on board. Just get rid of these fighting energies, and it is going to be an easy path to victory. Yeah, there's only the one real way to get those back. So as soon as they're gone, you're forcing Christian into that position, and already it's taken Christian so long to get the escape rope to even be in a spot that he could have all this energy to try and play around with. You start to also wonder about energy counts in general. We've seen the two switching effects. The Galar Mind is still in play. So if you can remove energies even from the Arceus V-Star, could that be enough to avoid seeing some attacks here from Christian? Silene, that'll be one head, just one head it is, going to be able to grab a card from the discard here. We've seen this loop before. Don't have to explain it too much. Iron up the quick ball for this one. Yeah, I think the, the pieces of Mewtwo are starting to show off how relevant they are now, and 
Uh, that's why we saw Piper holding on to, I believe it was an ultra ball or at least a quick ball last turn where the hand could have been thinned down a little more. Wants to guarantee that the discarding effects are going to be there when the time comes. Yes, yeah, slowly but surely get everything set up correctly at this point. V-Guard energy in hand will be attached onto the benched Evel tall before just Gorbanizing to end the turn and pass it on back over to Christian. Well, Christian is staring at a prize card. <laughs> it's a spot that he, he hasn't seen in a long time and, and has to be welcomed here. And do, we do see the Marnie is going to be a great way to slow things down here. You are going to knock out a Snorlax and maybe put uh, Piper on a clock where it's going to be one more Snorlax potentially. And if, if that hand isn't any good, Christian could continue to take big knockouts. Especially with the attempt to build up a hand, being able to Marnie to just take that away from Piper to make sure that she can't start comboing off things like crazy is super nice. And there we go, Trinity Nova for KO to get a second prize card on Christian's end. Looks like Christian's down to oh, nine or 10 cards at this point, using every resource to stay in this battle here. Down to just four prize cards now. And that's the thing too, you can start taking the prizes, but you gotta make sure that you can keep following up because you have to take all six to be able to close this out. Peonia now, this is the second one played, so we know that Piper going to look at the other side of the prize cards and we'll be able to grab one of those Mewtwo pieces. Yeah, big find there. To get that off of the Marnie, now have this opportunity to at least get the third piece into the hand. And are the resources there? Not just yet, so Snorlax is gonna have to try to do a little help. Just hold on a little more, buddy. Snorlax is going to be all right. It is not going to be OK. <laughs> You're going to get KO'd. Christian is not really doing too much other than, all right, I'm just going to keep hitting you, and I'm just going to force Piper to have it in this spot. It was such a slow start, but he's doing a good chunk of damage, and it would only be the crushing hammer to deny those energies. Well, you can see the prizes lined up for Christian, and of course, Piper understands this as well. We see the Evitol and the Mill Tank as the prize is to get down to one. And then, of course, if you can get that Mewtwo V Union as a huge Pokemon to make it an eight prize game. Silene going to try to help out a little bit here. The deck down to just, I believe, one card. Let's yep. go ahead and make it two and see if we can get the pieces to close out. Confusion looks like a great call. Yeah, to make sure that this consistent damage that this Arceus is dealing out, these consistent prizes that Christian's able to finally get strung together, can maybe be put to a grinding halt with help of that yell horn. But it's time to call on someone else. All four pieces have been gathered. So we can see that Mewtwo V Union come into play that's going to make its way into the active slot at this point and being able to get an energy attached to go and get some get this party started for Piper. And all basic energies as well. Perfectly assembled here for Piper. Does not have to worry about the Duraludon V Max at this stage. and. Uh, this is going to be awkward for, for Christian now. Do you just continue to hit for 200 and deck out? Eventually, you got to retreat and start attacking with Duraludon. That's the difficult decision to be in, too, because this Mewtwo, I mean, it is so strong in the fact that, yes, it does take forever to get set up, but the super regeneration is just absolutely crazy to make sure that Christian can't take any more prizes, can't be doing any impact to you. And now a pal pad going to be a welcome site for this Really dwindling deck on Piper's end, though. This is where you can also thrive, because you know what resources you're continuously being able to loop into that deck. Yeah, I, will, I would take Piper having one to two cards in deck compared to 30 cards from Christian at this point, just because you know that these will continue to cycle through. So many ways to do this. The pal pad, uh, the team yells cheer, and uh, you'll never really see <laughs> Piper deck out in spots like these. It's going to have to look over at Christian's side with maybe seven cards left in the deck now. Yeah, it would have to be a huge misplayers miscalculation at some point, but good with, like, good with control, I mean, an understatement at this point. Piper knows what she's doing and making sure that that win con will never be achieved on Christian's end. Always just make sure that you have something there. Training court, making its way onto the field that can grab an energy from discard and just needed it to get this retreat off the Duraludon into the active slot that will be able to do a little bit more damage. 
Yeah, this is a, a good spot here from Christian. Now going to counter the stadium, bring up this big Pokemon that has the two fighting energies on it. So Crushing Hammer, not going to be uh, a great way to combat this. Instead, maybe it would have to be the Confusion once more if that card was uh, ever able to be reached. But we also know about the additional chain that you can work in with the Pokemon Center Lady. If you can work that in, uh, you can avoid being knocked out in stages like this. The remaining da uh, damage after the 200 just heals right off. Yeah, the last thing you want is for that more than 200 to then leave damage counters onto this Mewtwo after the fact. And Pokemon Center Lady, a great addition into this to make sure that this Mewtwo, the Union, always going into this next turn is going to be nice and safe. Basically every third turn you want to be able to use this as 20 damage will continue to accumulate onto the Mewtwo V Union. So plenty of time for Piper to get the right pieces and... Uh, when you have resources like the Pukumuku and you keep the deck as thin as just four cards right now, you have to expect that this card could be found at the right time. So much more decisions on Piper's end to make than Christian. Christian was just, I'm attached and I'm going to hit you, whereas on Piper's end now, figuring out the best course of action, going to go and go for that Marnie. Yeah, Marnie is a, a great way to guarantee that you're going to see the right cards. Uh, it's, uh, you draw your deck and uh, you take one additional card from your hand at this stage. And uh, <laughs> sometimes that's the way it goes here. You get everything you want with that in the Pitcher Pikamuku just to grab another one, put that bottom of the deck. And it'll be the Yell Horn that does make its way into Piper's hand at this point. Going to hold off on that though. The Super Regeneration is going to be enough. Uh, it's easy turn for Christian here. Just continue to put the damage on and try to see if you can put some pressure on Piper here. And of course, when you put, use the Yellhorn in combination with the Pokemon Center Lady, it's exactly where you want to be. Remove all of the damage and the confusion and go ahead and <laughs> put yourself in a fantastic spot against a giant confused skyscraper. Man, the amount of HP this Mewtwo V Union has. I mean, Trilodon, it does hit for such a high number. It's just nothing in comparison with the health on this Mewtwo and not nearly enough to be able to really go for any impact at this point. I love the fact that whenever Christian plays down a stadium, it's also a turn that he's going to retreat in these spots, never losing more energies than he has to. And now going to continue to attack with the Arceus, but... Uh, ultimately, this is just a, a turn that you're taking to uh, go back into the Geraldon at some point. Yeah, but that was a double tail flip, I believe, over on the Silent on Piper's end. Not be able to get things made back as fast as she needs. And now Christian, quick decision. All right, we're going to retreat, throw things into the discard, and just go ahead, try and hit you with the G-Max pulverization. Well, Silene is going to help out here. Getting one heads, and at least the pal pad is going to make its way back into the deck. We do see the Pukimuku as well, so that could eventually grab some things. But ultimately, just keep a card in the deck, and you'll be okay. Yeah, as, as long as you have one, then you are in a fine spot, especially going up against this, because if you're able to get those Pokemon Center ladies and nothing can really go up against this Mewtwo V Union, then this could just be a slow, painful loss on Christian's end. I guess the one thing to note is, uh, in general, you have to keep uh, an eye on how many cards are in your hand and deck in combination. Uh, maybe if your opponent was able to use a card like Marnie, then you could accidentally deck out, but I think we've seen plenty of those from Christian's side already. Yeah, you just have to make sure no matter what, you're always going to be in a good spot and off that turn, very quick turns happening here. I mean, Piper has to do so much, and all Christian has to do is G-Max pulverization, go. And Christian still has plenty of cards left in deck. After the, the Marnie from Piper, many cards were placed back in there. So this means that Piper's going to have to keep the chain rolling. And we see two cards in deck, and eventually going to have to see some help here. Serena going to try to pull a little weight and... With no Galar mind, a two retreat cost is the only thing standing in the way of another attack here. These retreats, though, they are adding up. It's definitely nice that the Galar mind isn't out, but still, you don't necessarily have the most energy available to you, and they can't be all wasted into the discard. It's like six or seven cards left in the deck. No energy in hand. So this Arceus V-Star is stuck, and that's going to be the extension. Game over. Piper Lapine closing out here, winning her second regional of the 2023 season.
And what a run by Piper. I mean, bringing it's such a great call bringing this Mewtwo V Union into the event. And sometimes these control decks, once you make it into the top cut, can be a little bit weird, but an absolute master class that was so well deserved. And that's now two time regional champion in the Masters Division. Yes, Piper Lapine is your Toronto regional champion. Congratulations to our Mewtwo V Union control player. And then absolute masterclass performance that we've seen against Christian Labella, who put on quite a show as well. So exciting to follow the Duraludon player, uh, but unfortunately not able to close out. It's such a tough matchup too, going up into that. We got to see as soon as that Mewtwo V Union hit the field, and Piper took her time with that too. She wasn't, she didn't have to. I mean, she was crushing hammers, but when it's going up against this Duraludon. I mean, the Duraludon player has just such a rough go of it. Just not being able to get those energies, not doing enough damage that, honestly, Christian needed a lot of luck on his side if he wanted to make that happen. Yeah, and I, I, I just love that when we see uh, the control deck up against uh, this style of, uh, of variant, the, the Duraludon, you, you see exactly what separates the, the good players, the great players, the masterclass players. Piper putting on quite a show, being able to continually find exactly what part to manipulate in the game. Do I go after the energies? Do I get the confusion worked in? Uh, bosses orders to 